Do Buddhists see life as a kind of mistake that should sort itself out by obtaining Nibbāna? If there was a way for life to avoid somehow suffering, to somehow avoid suffering, would it be okay for it to continue in the physical realm? We start. Well, if there is no suffering, then there wouldn't be any point, I guess. But you're bound to have suffering in the physical realm. Just because that's the... That's just the way it is. Your body is uncomfortable. Having to deal with things they don't like is uncomfortable. You're bound to experience pain emotionally, mentally, physically. So, I don't know, this just seems like a philosophizing about things. It doesn't really seem to matter if, well, if there wasn't suffering in the physical realm, because there is and there has to be. There's no way that it couldn't be. Hmm. Yeah, just just let's, if I can get a little bit technical about the question. Mistake um, kind of implies that at one point, this idea that maybe one point in the past we were in Nibbana and then we, oops, we somehow fell out of it. Um, you know, reality or e existence is um, it exists, no, and it always has. It 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 is it is called existence, and in an ultimate sense, that's really all you can say about it. Is it exists? There are a few more things you can say. Existence. The characteristic of existence is to arise. Uh, anything that comes into existence, and maybe that's not quite correct. The word existence isn't quite correct, but um, experience. No, uh, let's put it this way, because this is what we always say. Reality is experience. So experience is something that has been or that, that, that exists. No? And experience, that which is experienced arises. So there is the arising. That which arises is always also of the nature to cease. This is actually what we're trying to realize in Buddhism. If you realize just that fact, you become free from suffering. That, or you you enter at least and become a sotapan. If you realize that everything yang kinci samudaya dhammang sabantang nirodha dhammang, if you realize that, that's that's the entry into sotapanna. But it it doesn't just mean you think about it philosophically. It means you actually experience the cessation of everything. So you realize that there's nothing that lasts. We, we've never realized that. We, it's not something that is a part of experience. It's not something that is... Um, it's not a part of the loop, right? So when you get caught up in the loop, you'll never be able to see this arising and ceasing. Because the loop is that of uh, experiencing, uh, clinging, acting, and then experiencing, clinging, and acting. This is the what the... the uh, it starts with the kilesa, the the reacting. Then there's the kamma, the acting, and then there's the uh, vipaka, which is the uh, experiencing the result. And then when you experience the result, you react and so on. And because because we're doing this, we never stop to actually look at at what's making up the experience. We're constantly reacting. So be because of that, we we've always really been we've always been in samsara. It's uh, only a person who is able to stop the the Ferris wheel or the the, the merry-go-round, no? and actually begin to look at what they're doing, look at what's going on, is able able to free themselves. So it's not a mistake; it's a uh, it's an experience. It's the state of experiencing things. Now, Buddhism isn't isn't um, a religion of complaining and saying, you know, there's something, something wrong here. You have to doing, you have to do something. It's pointing out that this can never um, be stable. It can never be satisfying. It has because it has the nature to, uh, or or it's not static, no. So it, it has the nature to to 
uh, lead in in one direction or the other. If a person does good things, they become a good person and become happy. And then, if once if and one when they become negligent, they fall down and become unhappy. They do bad things and become unhappy. So, this is why it's um, it, it, the reason why it's never possible to avoid suffering is because it's it's not static. So even if you're able to avoid suffering for a billion, 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 billion years, or a Google years, Googleplex years, let's say, or that from the time of a Big Bang to a Big Crunch, or or a cold death or whatever, if you were able, this, 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 whatever they conjecture, even that isn't freedom from suffering, because it's still impermanent. It's still not static. As long as there is the mind creating more karma, you know, based on its kilesa, its desires, its partialities, there will be more karma. When there is more karma, there will be more results and there will be a change. The Buddha said, Muno, Mano dhamma, reality, experience, comes from the mind. So the only way you could have something static is to get rid of the mind. If you get rid of the mind, you could have a robot that was perhaps always happy. But there would be, there, well, yeah, the robot would be fine. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say the robot would be unhappy. This computer is never unhappy, for example. Microphone is never unhappy. It's got no problem because there's no mind. But the the mind that experiences has a problem because it's clinging and always creating. It's going around in this circle. Buddhism teaches us to uh, to stop that and to create a mind or to develop a experience of reality that doesn't cling and that doesn't create. Because it doesn't cling and doesn't create, it uh, it becomes stable, it becomes satisfying, it becomes um, permanent. No. It becomes constant. So there is, there is never any suffering. And the experiences that have been created in the past begin to fade away. And in the end there is only this basic experience of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, and thinking, which also disappears. And so the person who enters into Nibbana does so because they've entered into a state of non-clinging, of non-creating. And if you don't enter into that state, you're always going to be creating, you're always going to be changing things. You have to remember that Buddhism hasn't, hasn't uh, avoided this. The Buddha didn't... Uh, it didn't didn't slip by him this idea of of creating a stable and lasting reality in samsara the buddha actually remembered these kind of states and he talked about these kind of states the state of a brahma for example so these people talking about uh, maybe what if we put the human mind into a machine or we altered the brain in such a way fixed it up so that it never got old and so that it was constantly in some kind of pleasure you know, this kind of pleasurable state, and they say, "Well, there, there you go. There's something. This transhumanism. Did you read about on our forum? Someone was asking this, but you know that's pitiful in comparison with the age of a Brahma, a god that the Buddha was talking about and remembered and and explained how to get to. You don't need robots to do it. Just leave the body behind. You know, develop the mind to the extent that the, that the, that it leaves behind the body, and it can do that for." an entire kappa, an entire age, even longer, I think. There are certain Brahma realms that are above the Big Bang, so even the Big Bang doesn't affect them, This or the Big Crunch, or whatever, the the, the changing of the kappas doesn't affect them. And then there's maybe, I don't know, the cosmology is... Uh, there's It's quite detailed, actually. So th this robot is certainly not going to last for that long. But even a Brahma, a Brahma does, and even a Brahma is not free from suffering. You you never can be, as Nagasena was saying, by very nature, uh, experience is unsatisfying and uncontrollable. It's not static. You can't. Um, it's it's not static because there is the intentions, there is the kilesa. This is why the Buddha said the kilesa are the problem, the defilements in our mind because we want something, because we we are not satisfied with things as they are we make some attempt to change things. The only way to become satisfied is to give up our desire for something that doesn't exist, 
to give up our desire for 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 any uh, impermanent thing. And once we give up that desire, the mind naturally inclines towards nibbana, and not towards the arising. I mean, how, how could it? It wouldn't ever give rise to the intention to create anything at all, because it doesn't give rise to the intention to create. It can't help but but uh, well, the, the the things that are created will not increase. There's no feeding of the fire, so the fire eventually goes out. That's uh, that's the answer. <laughs>